Welcome to our channel, Management Accounting Made Easy. This is our last part of cost, volume, profit analysis. Here we are going to see the target profit. So we are going to see what is meant by target profit. Businesses exist to make profit. So profit making businesses, they exist to make profit. Therefore, the main objective of a profit making business is not just to break even, but to earn a decent amount of profit. So it is a goal for how much money a company wants to make. So target profit is a decision rather than a calculation. Now, we all know at break-even point, the sales revenue is only able to cover the total cost, isn't it? The total cost is fixed cost plus the variable cost. The company will make no profit, no loss at break-even point. Now, after reaching the break-even point, the net next step for a business is to think of making profit. So the next step for a profit making business is to think of making profit. Now we're going to see again what is a target profit. So the target profit is the expected amount of profit that the managers of a business expect to achieve by the end of a designated accounting period. So this target profit will be updated regularly when the business expands. We'll see the advantages of target profit decision. So this provides less variation between the actual profit and the target profit. Because setting the target profit covers the evaluation of the sales level or the amount of revenue needs to be generated to earn a target profit after covering the fixed overhead expenditure and variable overhead expenditure in the targeted period. So which will lead to the accurate target profit forecast. Now the second point more feasible and reliable target profit estimates are made because target profit gets updated um, when the actual results changes. Thereby, it becomes more feasible and reliable to use. Now, the next point, it will show the profit making capability of a business because this provides a detailed analysis of the fixed cost and the variable cost structure of a business. So in addition, the incorporation of the selling price and costs will help to evaluate the gross profit margin percentage, the net profit margin percentage. So this will help in the overall evaluation of the profit making capability of the business. As we all know, everything has its own advantages and disadvantages. So now we are going to see the disadvantages of target profit decision. So the first thing, inaccurate target profit estimates can be made because target profit calculation is done by the top management, which can be open to manual errors or mistakes. So this may lead to inaccurate results or projection. Um, the next one, regular updates of target profit could become a hectic task for the management because they have to update the target profit as the business expands. So this um, so since this analysis requires updates on a regular basis, so this could sometimes become um, serious and hectic task for the management team. Before looking at the um, 
target profit calculation examples, we are going to see the formula for calculating the target profit. So we know the marginal costing uh, formula from our previous marginal costing videos, which is sales minus variable cost equals to contribution. Take away the fixed cost will give us the profit. But here for the target profit, we are going to work backwards. That means we are going to start from the profit. So if you look at this one, the profit. So this profit is the target profit. So for example, if a company wants to make 100,000 pounds as target profit, okay, so then we are going to see the fixed cost. So the fixed cost is 15,000, for example, here. So the company's target profit is 100,000. Company's fixed cost is 15,000. So they have to make a contribution of 115,000. So, so the contribution of 115,000 will cover the fixed cost and they can earn a target profit of 100,000. Now they have to see the variable cost. How can they control the variable cost in order to make that 115,000 um, contribution? And also they can see how much sales they need to make in order to cover the variable cost. And on top, they can make this contribution. So as you can see, we were working from backwards. So we are going to see some examples after. Okay, we are going to see some examples here. The examples I have chosen, they're slightly tricky ones, not the straightforward ones. But as I always mention, please practice as many questions as you can. So we are going to see this example, Exotic Limited. So we'll see the question. Exotic Limited manufactures and sells a single product. The following data has been extracted from the current year budget. So they have given the current year data. Contribution to sales ratio, 70%. Variable cost per unit, 12 pounds. Fixed cost per unit, 15 pounds. Production and sales, 7,500 units. So these are the current data they have given, but we can see some missing information here, which is the contribution per unit, selling price per unit. So obviously we need to calculate the contri current contribution per unit and the current selling price per unit. Now we'll continue reading the question. All cost and selling price are expected to increase next year. Selling price is by 6%, variable cost is by 7% and the fixed cost by 5%. The company wishes to maintain the same level of profit like last year. So if you see, they didn't give us the last year's profit. So we have to calculate the last year's profit. Calculate the number of units Exotic Limited needs to produce and sell in order to maintain the same profit level like last year. So we have seen the question now. So we are going to see how to answer this question. Okay, we are going to do this exotic limited question so the question is being summarized so contribution to sales ratio 70 percent variable cost per unit is 12 pounds fixed cost per unit is 15 pounds production and sales 7500 units this is for the current year so we need to calculate the current year's contribution per unit that is going to be our step one. Then we have to calculate 
the current year's profit, that is going to be our step two. So we'll start with our step one, calculation of contribution per unit. Um, in our previous um, videos, we have done similar calculations. So same way, we are going to do this. As we all know, contribution per unit is sales takeaway variable cost per unit. In this case, we don't know the selling price per unit. So we are going to say the selling price per unit is S. So S take away 12. So that is the contribution divided by the sales is equal to 70%. So if you look at the formula, S take away 12 divided by S is equal to 70%, which is 0 0.7. Now, if we cross multiply this S, so the formula can be rewritten as S take away 12 is equal to 0.7 S, S. Therefore, we can calculate S as 40 pounds. Now, we know the selling price now 40 pounds. So we can calculate the contribution per unit, which is 40 take away the 12 so that is 28 pounds per unit. So we have done our calculation of contribution per unit. Now we are going to look at our step two, which is the calculation of the current year's profit. So the total contribution is 28 pounds. That is the contribution per unit times it by the number of units sold is 7,500. So we will get the total contribution of 210,000. So total contribution, take away the total fixed cost. So fixed cost per unit is 15 times it by the number of units, which is 7,500. So we will get the total fixed cost of 112,000. 500. So contribution take away fixed cost, we will get the current profit which is 97,500. Now next year everything going to change. The selling price, the variable cost, the fixed cost, everything is going to change but the company wants to maintain the same level of profit. Okay so we will calculate the new contribution per unit. So the step three, next year's new contribution per unit calculation. Now, the selling price is going to increase by 6%. So 40 pounds currently times it by 1.06. So the new selling price will be 42 pounds and 40 pence. Take away the new variable cost because the question says variable cost is going to increase by 7%. At the moment, the variable cost is £12 per unit. So the new variable cost is going to be 12 times 1.07. So that is 12.84. So if you take away 42.40, take away 12.84, so you will get the new contribution of 29 pounds and 56 pence. Now our step four. The step four, we are going to calculate the target contribution. Okay, so the target contribution is, um, the target profit is given 97,500. That is the, target profit. The fixed cost is going to increase. So at the moment, the fixed cost is 112,500. That fixed cost is going to increase by 5%. So 112,000. So that is the current uh, fixed cost, 112,500 times it by 1.05, which is the increase of 5%. So the new fixed cost is going to be 
118,125. Now, with the fixed cost, we are going to add the target profit, which is 97,500. So the company has to make a contribution of 215,625 pounds in order to get the target profit. So now the question is the number of units to be sold in order to get the target profit, which is 215,625 divided by the new contribution, which is 29.56. So the number of units the company has to sell is 7,295 units. I'll, quick, I'll quickly repeat the step four again. The step four, the question wants us to calculate the number of units the company has to sell in order to make the target profit of 97,500. In this case, the fixed cost is also increasing. So we need to calculate the new fixed cost, which is um, the current fixed cost is 112,500. So the current fixed cost is going to increase by 5%. So 112,000 uh, 112,500 times it by 1.05. So the new fixed cost will be 118,125. Now, the company's target profit is 97,500. So the expected contribution is the new fixed cost, which is 118,125 plus the target profit of 97,500. So the expected contribution should be 215,625. So now we know the expected contribution. We know the contribution per unit, which is 29.56. So we can calculate the number of units to be sold in order to get the same profit which is 215,625 divided by 29.56. So it is 7,295 units. We are going to see another example called Candy Limited. We'll see this question. Candy Limited makes quality sweets. They're planning to make two different types of sweets, potato sweets and mango sweets. Potato sweets uh, selling price per sweet is £3.50 and the variable cost per potato sweet is 50p. So we can calculate the contribution per unit um, for the potato sweet. Same way they have given the selling price per unit of the mango sweet which is 550 and the variable cost per mango sweet is also given which is a pound now twice as many units of mango sweets are made and sold compared to potato sweets and then they said fixed cost are 29000 pounds candy limited is planning to make a target profit of 70,000. Now the question is we need to calculate the total number of potato sweets and mango sweets to be sold in order to make the target profit of 70,000. Okay, we are going to see this example um, Candy Limited. So as we have seen before, they have given the selling price per unit for both sweets, variable cost per unit as well given. And then the question says twice as many units of uh, mango sweets are made and sold compared to potato sweets. And the fixed cost is given and the target profit is given. Now we need to calculate 
the total number of potato sweets and mango sweets to be sold in order to make the target profit of 70,000. Now, first step, we need to calculate the contribution per unit for both. So the potato sweets contribution per unit is three pounds because selling price per unit take away the variable cost per unit. And the contribution per unit for the mango sweet is 450 because the selling price 550 take away the pound, so it's 450. Now, because there are two different types of sweets, so we need to calculate the weighted average contribution per unit. Now, so they are trying to sell one potato sweet to two mango sweets. So the ratio is one is to two. So if you calculate the weighted average contribution, so three uh, pounds per unit is the contribution per potato sweet times it by one plus uh, four pounds fifty is the contribution per unit for the mango sweet times it by two units. So if you do that, you will get 12 pounds divided by one plus two, that is three. So the weighted average contribution per unit is four pounds. Now, the total contribution required to earn the target profit, which is we all know fixed cost plus the target profit. So the fixed cost is 29,000. The target profit is 70,000. So the total contribution required to earn the target profit is 99,000. So we can calculate the total number of units required to make the target profit, which is 99,000. That's the target profit divided by the weighted average contribution per unit, which is four. Therefore, the number of units we require, both potato sweet as well as mango sweet, is 24,750 units. We are going to see another example using the Candy Limited. So the contribution per unit is three pounds for potato sweet and four pounds fifty for mango sweets. Fixed overhead per unit is one point two five four potato sweet and one point seven five four mango sweet. The budgeted production and sales for August twenty twenty one is given. The fixed overhead cost for mango sweet relates to the apportionment of general overhead cost, but the potato sweet has a specific fixed overhead cost of 1750. So that means if you don't produce potato sweet, we can avoid that specific fixed cost of 1750 pounds. Now, if only mango sweets were to be made and Candy, Candy Limited is planning to achieve a target profit of 55,712, how many units of mango sweets needs to be sold by Candy Limited? So we got to bear in mind because now they are going to produce only mango sweet. So the specific fixed overhead cost for the one uh, potato sweet, which is 1,750, uh, wouldn't be incurred by the company. So we'll see this example. So the summary of the question, contribution per unit is given, fixed overhead per unit we know, budgeted production and sales for August is given. Now the specific fixed overhead. 1750 and the target profit is given okay now at this point the question says the company is going to produce only mango sweet so we all know we have to minus 
the specific fixed overhead cost of 1750 from the total fixed cost. Okay, so we are going to calculate the required contribution to earn the target profit. Now, we have to take the fixed cost, excluding the specific fixed cost, plus the target profit is going to be our target contribution. Now, uh, so the fixed cost for the potato sweets is 1.25 per unit times it by 7,100. That's for the potato sweet. Plus for the mango sweets is 1.75 times it by 11,500. So if you take the total, that is 29,000. Now we have to take away the specific fixed cost of 1,750. So the fixed cost um, for this target contribution is 27,250 plus the target profit which is 55,712. So the fixed cost of 27,250 plus the 55,712. So the target contribution is going to be 82,962. So here we got to remember to take the specific fixed overhead cost from the total fixed overhead. Now the number of units of mango sweets required um, to get that target contribution is 82,962 divided by 4.5 which is the contribution per unit for the mango sweet so we require 18,436 units of mango sweets to be made and sold. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you with relevant costing.